Hey friends, Ash here with Gents Sense. Hope you're doing well. I've got a big haul for you guys here today. A big haul. <laughs> Six different fragrances. We've got some older ones, some newer ones. We got a good mix here. As we work through this, I'll show you what I've got. I'll open it up and I'll smell it here for the first time and let you guys know what I think about it. So let's jump into it. And today's video is sponsored by FragranceBuy.ca. So a shout out to them and a link in the description to their website. In case you're unaware of FragranceBuy.ca for any reason, they're a great discounter. They've got great prices on niche fragrances, designer fragrances. They've got a loyalty program you can sign up for to get free shipping and discounts and stuff like that. Based in Canada, but they ship really quickly to the US. So thank you to FragranceBuy.ca. Again, link in the description. Okay. We're gonna kick things off, and I just have these th thrown together in like a pile in front of me. Great. We're gonna kick it off with Burberry Brit Rhythm. This is the Eau de Toilette Intense version. Yeah, believe it or not, I, I actually did not own this fragrance. Uh, I think I smelled it once many years ago at uh, Sephora and just never picked it up. It's just one of those things where you tell yourself, yeah, I'll add that onto an order at some point when I'm you know, checking out because it's not that much. I'll just throw it in there. And then you just never do. You flash forward three, four years, still haven't done it. So here is the fragrance box. You've got the name of the house, name of the fragrance right there on the front. Eau de Toilette Intense, nothing on the sides. Again, Burberry Brit Rhythm up top. Got a, an outline of the bottle on the back. Your batch code and barcode at the bottom. I like this as a little pointer. I'm gonna start doing that from now on. That is a long batch code. No, thank you. And here is the bottle. Kind of cheap looking, yes. Reminds me vaguely of the Xenia Womo bottle, but it's what you expect. So you've got this little design on the front, on the back as well. Cap is a cheap plastic, doesn't really weigh anything, clicks into place. And then you've got your batch code on the bottom. Let's spray it on to a tester strip because I'm not gonna spray six fragrances on myself today. No thanks. I would end up smelling like Frankenstein's monster after this video was over if I did that. Even though I gotta say, I absolutely am not really a fan of using tester strips. And I do suggest if you go into a store to test fragrances out, yeah, spraying on a tester strip is fine. But if you think you really like something and you're gonna buy it, spray it on your skin first, see how it smells there. Because fragrances can change drastically from how they smell here to how they smell here. This is nice fresh. It doesn't smell like hyper complex or expensive, even though I know there's a bunch of notes in here, but it smells fresh and sweet and easy to wear. Now, as I say that there is a bit of a, a density that pops out a little more depth, a little more richness, beginning to take on more of a cool weather type tone to it, or a fragrance you would wear in cool weather situations, I should say but it's offset nicely and contrasted by the sweeter notes and the fresher notes that pop off immediately when you first spray it on. So you've got this sort of vanillic, slightly dusty leather that's sitting underneath uh, those fruity notes and that bit of spice. It smells good. I can see why this would be a popular release from the house. Yeah, yeah, for the price, this is actually really good. Maybe the bottle is not the most eye-catching thing on earth when you compare it to some of the more gaudy, tacky bottles out there but this is uh this is solid i dig this all right starting off good let's keep it moving and go with uh hugo boss now and this is a tester so the box is worthless and here's the bottle it's got this kind of frosted glass look to it and then the fragrance on the inside is is kind of strange actually it is kind of a greenish watery color. So it reminds me vaguely of polluted river or, or polluted ocean or polluted lake or something that Captain Planet wouldn't be happy about. That's that's what it looks like. So this one, uh, the reason I bring up that, that kind of strange looking coloration a little bit is when you look at it online, the pictures that Hugo has for this, it, it looks like a very icy blue kind of liquid on the inside of this bottle. And it's not that it looks entirely unattractive, but it definitely is not as nice looking to the eye as the 
the commercial photos for this. It's not just me, right? There's a difference. That's no big deal though. Fragrances actually do change coloration over time. Um, some of my olfactive studio bottles, they have changed drastically over the years as far as the coloration of the fragrance goes. Some of them were initially kind of a purple color and now they're like a strange greenish yellow. Oh, this is super fresh. Yeah, this is really, really a fantastic smelling in the opening off a tester strip, summertime scent. It's got lemon, it's got an icy feel to it, and that's actually gonna kind of give you a slight remembrance of fragrances like Dior Homme Cologne or Jimmy Choo Man Ice. Also, some slight similarities to Light Blue O Intense. This is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not as great off skin, but it's still pretty good. Less of a similarity to Dior Own Cologne, Jimmy Two Man Ice off skin than off the strip. Off the strip, it's a lot closer. Maybe, you know, similar family though, similar style where you're just wearing something really brisk and refreshing and uplifting with a big citric punch with a bunch of iciness behind it. That's what you're getting here. Still does have similarities to a lot of other summertime fragrances out there, but that is solid. Pick that up in the mid 30s and below, and that's a good pickup. Okay, let's go with uh, let's go with this expensive boy, Fort and Manly, Forty Thieves. Look at that. It's got a little bow on top. Let's slide that off of there, and ta-da! Muy bueno. Here's the box, name of the house, name of the fragrance, little Fort and Manly logo at the top, nothing on the sides, nothing on the back, on the bottom, got your ingredient information. Love the bottles from this house. They've got a metallic plaque on the front, which you can see right there. 40 Thieves, Fort and Manly, nothing on the sides, nothing on the back. Cap slides snugly into place. Got a good amount of heft to it, nice and heavy, nothing on the bottom. Ooh, that's rich. Yeah, syrupy, sweet, rich spices but syrupy sweet in a good way, a good way. It doesn't come across smelling like, uh, you know, something overly synthetic and, and cheap. Honeyed amber with little puffs of smoke. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is really good. And also I, I do love that step up in quality where you go from, from a Hugo Boss little canteen bottle to this. It's like, <laughs> what a difference. Now the Hugo Boss is still Perfectly fine, smells great for summertime use, but the quality here is, is great. Quite a fan of fragrances that are ambery and done with a, a significant incense note as well. Uh, very resinous, rich fragrance, as I said before. This is fantastic, absolutely killer for fall, for winter time, more of an evening fragrance, but I would wear that during the day as well, assuming it's not too hot. Let's go from that one to this, yeah, this, this. It is called Six, and it is a Parfum de Toilette. So it's a Parfum de Toilette. I don't think that's a thing. This is by Sterling Parfum. You may know them from uh, such hit fragrances as uh, Club de Nuit, Intense Man, and everything Ormoff has ever done. This one is made in 01, 2021. So January of this year, on the back it says, distinguish yourself with this classic woody aromatic fragrance featuring robust coffee notes intertwined with a deep royal blend of incense and agarwood. I have absolutely no clue what this is supposed to be, assuming this is a clone fragrance, but I don't know what of. Let's see how the bottle looks, oh my God. That is... something it's a bottle i hate it so here it is it's got little nodules on it <laughs> little bumps we'll say and they go all the way around so when you grab it you've got this meaty bumpy thing in your hands and then on the front here it says six parfum de toilette nothing uh else on the bottle other than on the back where they have written in ink the batch and uh, when it was made. My expectations are low, but that means they can easily be exceeded. Mm, see, that's, that's big brain. Keep your expectations low, like really, 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 really low, then you will never be upset. It's not too bad. It's definitely leaning into the whole agarwood 
thing, uh, the Oud note. You can tell because it's a very similar Oud note uh, that has been used before in a, a bunch of Armoff and other Middle Eastern clone house fragrances. Oh yeah, there's a lot more punch off of uh, off skin. Yeah, it's a lot deeper, a little bit darker, more of a wang to it. It's got a little bit of a funk to it. For some people, it is not gonna smell good. That little bit of funkiness that it has doesn't really bother me though. It's uh, it's uh, it's moderately funky, not not too much. So this smells similar to something I own. So some fragrances seem to get cloned more often than others. This is one that does have a number of different clones out there. And it's it's a bit like this fragrance though. It has certainly its own, own twist on things. And I will say that this one, uh, six Parfum de Toilette is toning down pretty quickly. That opening, that opening rush, I mean, it's only been a couple minutes and it's already kind of mellowing out but it smells vaguely like this fragrance black afghano from nasa Mato. so it's a it's a sort of play on that fragrance as i said though very quickly that opening salvo that punch that you get when you first spray it on it, it drops out quick and now it's becoming kind of an ambery semi oud like oud ish type of scent touch of frankincense, but beginning to settle into more of an ambery type thing. Let's keep it moving. Next up, we have Keton. Keton. Boom, boom, right there. I'm not gonna show you the presentation really because uh, this video is running long, but hey, here it is. Here's the bottle. Look at that. It's clear. It's got the name on it. It's got a button. Nice. This one has been compared in the past to Green Irish Tweed by Creed, which is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Off the strip, uh, not close enough that it's a one-to-one -one with Green Irish Tweed or anything like that. Maybe you could say similar style, similar family with a twist, something like that. Certainly very fresh, brisk, fruity sweetness off the top, but not in a syrupy sweet kind of way, just a really lively kind of way, energetic. Sort of a fuzzy, musky undertone, a good amount of violet in here as well. Pick the violet up pretty much right away as soon as you spray this one on. Maybe the violet would be comparable very slightly to how it comes across in something like Aqua Fahrenheit. You know, um, the long discontinued, rest in peace, Aqua Fahrenheit. Yeah, this is good, I like it. This is going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older. Younger guys probably not gonna like this a whole lot. In your 30s or up, check that one out. Spring, summer, fall. Last fragrance, Guerlain Homme Loboise. Here we got the box, name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration on the front, like always, like it should be. On top, Guerlain logo, nothing on the side, nothing on the side, ingredients on the back down here, batch code on the bottom. And here is the bottle. This is the new style of bottle. This is actually the first Guerlain Homme bottle that I have in this style or the first Guerlain Ohm fragrance in this style of bottle. All my uh, other Guerlain Ohm fragrances are in their old style. Yes, yes. Now this is awesome. This is awesome. I think younger guys can wear this, middle-aged guys can wear this, older guys can wear this. It's got a good touch of class in there. You got vetiver, you got lime, it's got a touch of booziness, sweetness, just fantastic. It's green, but not in an overwhelming way. Everything is contrasted well, it's blended well. I was worried that this uh, new bottle style would maybe have some effect on the fragrance, you know, as if they had changed it some when they put it into this bottle style, but no, this is great. This appeals to me though on so many different levels. I'm a huge fan of vetiver. You know, if you're not a fan of vetiver, this may not work as well for you, but if you are a fan, it's so good. Well, this is a solid, solid haul. I was looking to pick up some fragrances that don't cost all that much, that would still be very nice quality. That's what I was going for here. Other than, of course, this one, 40 Thieves. I just, you know, I just wanted that because I just did. Fort and Manly makes great uh, cool weather fragrances, especially their ambery type scents. So I had to get that, but everything else was done with keeping it inexpensive, but good quality. And I feel like all of these have that. My favorite is without a doubt, the Guerlain. 
if we're talking these fragrances that are less expensive, but I think all of them are good and some of them are great. All right, that's gonna do it for me. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and a shout out to Fragrance Buy, link in the description. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Au revoir.